we view, how we understand, how we care for our own bodies. So I want to thank, first of all, Jennifer Shotland, who will be my conversation partner this morning. Uh, Jennifer is an MSW in the public schools, a social worker. But I also want to thank uh, Dr. Judy Ronan Woodburn, who helped to advise me, Kelsey Ross, Kim Burke from Normal First United Methodist Church, and several others who uh, provided a little extra advice and consulting on this particular message. I also want to thank our podcast host, Mr. Andy Isbell. Uh, today is also a day that we'll be commissioning our leadership, and you may have hopefully received a bulletin insert that looks sort of like this, that lists the names of the folks who will be in elected leadership this year. At Wesley Church, that a leadership year begins July 1st, so we'll have them stand later in the service and actually say a liturgy and a prayer over them, but in the meantime, just kind of hang on to this, maybe even take it home with you to use for your prayer time. We invite you and encourage you to pray for your church's leadership. As we move into the service, headed to some thinking about body image, I want to remind you that Jesus loves you. No matter what you look like, no matter what you feel like, Jesus loves you just the way you are. And that is our organ prelude this morning. Let's worship God.
Good morning. Welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church. Those who are online and in-house as we are in God's living room. I am Reverend Tanya Edwards Evans. Will you kindly join me by standing to do our call to worship? based on Psalms 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You are acquainted with all my days. For it, is, it was you who formed me, formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am Will you join us in our morning hymn, Jesus Loves Me, United Methods Hymn 191.
God in prayer, I want you to take a moment to look around you. Of God's beautiful flower garden that's around you. Each individual is created uniquely and different under God's instructions. Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we say thank you for your artistry of creating each of us different. Even though, according to biology, we all have 106 bones, a heart, two lungs, two ears, two nostrils, two eyes. But yet we are all uniquely different because of your artist's skill to make our world beautiful. Lord, as we look at roses on the tree, they may have the same color, but they're uniquely different. As flowers bloom, you have different colors that show up on the same bush because of your artistry of making us beautiful. Father God, we have a world that wants to put everybody in the same category, in the same box. But that was not your intention. You created variety and diversity to see, to help us to see the beauty of your world. We take time to recognize that today in your creation called humanity. But we also take time to recognize the beauty in your creative world. Just on the other morning, ladies were sitting at the picnic tables across the street in the green space, sharing coffee and conversation because we gave them a place to gather to admire your beauty. Father, we thank you for the world. Even though we have not taken care of it as you've asked us to, forgive us for our slowfulness. Father, we pray for those who are hurting because of the stress of this world, because of the narrow mindedness of people. For those who are in power, we think they need to keep the power and not share the wealth. Father, we lift up children who are still praying for permanent homes. We are praying for seniors who feel like the world has left them alone because no one calls to check. Lord, we know our world is hurting. So much has gone on. But we stop to say thank you. Because there is always beauty found in the world if we just open our eyes and see. For we are not only wonderful and beautifully made, we are uniquely made in the image of you. And that we celebrate. Will you please join me as we say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples? Our Father, which art is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us
Welcome to the Bloomington Wesley Podcast, BW502, where we look at the intersection of faith and contemporary issues. Each episode, we'll look at topics suggested by Wesley's young adults through the lens of Scripture. Today's episode is called Conversations About Body Image, and our Scripture comes from 1 Samuel, the story of David. Joining us in the studio this morning are Pastor Sarah Isbell and Jennifer Shotland, MSW. Good morning to you both, and thanks for joining us today. Morning, Andy. Thanks for having us. Jen, I want to thank you for joining me on BW502 this morning as we talk about body image. I'm interested in your work related to body image. Now, you're a social worker in the public schools, is that right? Yes, I'm a school social worker in Woodford County. Okay. And do you see a lot of body image concerns among the students with whom you work? Absolutely. I work with kids from preschool through eighth grade. Uh, the junior high kids, I see a lot of self-hatred uh, due to their appearance, poor body image. They aren't big enough, they're too big, they don't have cool clothes, their hair is too frilly. I also see a lot of bullying regarding physical appearance, a lot of bullying. Um, even vaping is becoming a problem in the schools, even in the junior high wing down to fifth graders. Um, there's definitely a correlation with those that vape and those with poor body image. Um, and it's not just the junior high kids that are struggling. I see elementary students being bullied about their appearance. Um, we have kids at all ages that skip breakfast or lunch to try to lose weight. And maybe that will do anything to get out of PE due to poor body image, not social anxiety. And even with, um, with um, so, sorry, here's a startling statistic. One out of one third of every five of one third of five-year-old girls, so kindergartners, one third of kindergartners um, restrict their eating in order to stay thin. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's very prevalent. Each month, one million kids engage in risky behaviors in an attempt to control their weight. Oh my goodness. Where do these children get the idea that their bodies are shameful or embarrassing? That's a great question. Media is definitely a factor. All the images on TV, movies, video games, print ads, um, of these thin, white, beautiful people. We live in a diet culture, a society obsessed with thinness and dieting. Bullying from other students is another way. What better way to feel lot better about your own body than to point out others flaws? Um, but even more so are the comments made at home from their parents and family members. Think about how much family members comment on kids' bodies. So many of our compliments are appearance-based, spreading the message that how you look is what matters. And so many passive-aggressive comments trying to motivate kids to lose weight. You'd be so much prettier if you lose a little weight. Even the comment, you're not fat, you're beautiful, sends the message that fat is bad, and you cannot be both fat and beautiful. Wow. So it sounds like this is an issue, not just for adolescent girls, but for people of all genders, little to big, little children, and even adults. Definitely. And we so easily pass that uh, a lack of acceptance and love of our own bodies to our kids, and just everyone around us in general. Every negative comment we make about our own appearance reinforces the idea that looks are ever so important. How much money do we all spend on makeup, hair care, exercise equipment, and memberships, and even elective plastic surgery? The statistics vary, but I've seen between $100 and $300 a month women spend just on makeup and beauty products alone. And while 2018 was a record-breaking year for American plastic surgeries, that number has only gone up with COVID because it's a lot easier to recover at home when you're working from home. And how many of us are trying to lose the COVID-20? <laughs> Keto, Mediterranean, cleanses, two types. Some are good, some are not so good days. Granted, not all of this is a bad thing. Good hygiene, exercise, and proper nutrition are good for us. But millions of dollars are also spent healing or fixing people who hurt themselves trying to obtain the perfect body. Oh, wow. Um, like 
or steroids, diet pills, injuries from taking on too much, stressing the body too far, depression and anxiety from feeling unworthy and unsatisfactory, anorexia, bulimia. I've seen on the media that um, there are about the rise of rates of type 2 diabetes among children, which is true, but what you don't hear, but is also true, is that there are even more kids that have eating disorders. And beyond eating disorders, nearly one in three high school girls, one in three high school girls, and nearly one in six high school boys have disordered eating patterns serious enough to warrant medical help. One study found that one in eight girls, one in eight, have made herself vomit at least once in the past three months. These are really sobering statistics. So many people, it seems, are not happy with the way they look. I mean, I guess probably everybody that I know has at least one gripe, right, with their own body image. I suppose I should admit, I spend a little extra on my hairdresser every couple months so that I don't have to deal with turning gray, not ready yet. And I would probably see better if I wore my bifocals, but I don't because I don't like the way they look on my face. <laughs> I had a laser vision on varicose veins a few years back. I remember vividly thinking at my last appointment, okay, what am I going to get done next? Yeah, I saw easily, how easily addicting, how addicting it can become. Um, just to throw money at it. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with getting work done, uh, but the attitude of having all these things to be dissatisfied with or fixed. But there's so much already right with our bodies. We need to put some energy toward acknowledging those too. So I've got a challenge for us this morning. Congregation, and those of you at home. <laughs> Make a list on your bulletin or in your phone of all the amazing things you love about your body. Okay, not all of them. Um, five to ten, maybe. What are you thankful for? Um, those of you listening at home. So that can be that too. Okay, so take a minute and, and write down at least five things about your body that you like, that you're thankful for. That's difficult to do. <laughs> it's difficult to do. I know what's wrong. Jesse calls forth seven of his sons 
to present themselves before Samuel and for consideration as king. And each of those sons is taller and stronger and more handsome than the one before. But about each one of these sons, the Lord says to Samuel, nope, not this one. Scripture says, God says, do not look on his appearance or the height of his stature because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord sees the heart. So finally, after seven sons have passed by Samuel unaccepted, Samuel says to Jesse, have you got any more sons? And Jesse says, well, I got the littlest one out in the back. And David, of course, is out in the pasture watching for the sheep. But no sooner does little scrawny David come in the room, all sunburned and smelling like a sheep barn, but the Lord says to Samuel, this, this is the one. The Lord does not see as mortals see, says God. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord sees the heart. That's such a powerful message. I wish all the students in my school would see that. They are so worthy for who they are on the inside, not for how they look on the outside. And I wish we all could look at each other that way, too. Yeah. I think that many of us get very preoccupied with our outer selves, the way that we appear, and not the whole of who we are. But the Apostle Paul said to us that our bodies were perishable. He even used the word corruptible. Now that doesn't mean, I don't think, that our bodies are inherently corrupt. Some Christians, I think, believe that. That whatever is physical is somehow evil or shameful and it has to be suppressed or it has to be punished somehow. Maybe that's where extreme modesty culture comes from. The belief that who we are as physical beings was somehow a mistake, and that actually our bodies are shameful. I've been thinking about modesty culture a lot these days, as a mom of teenagers do. I'll be honest, I really struggle with it sometimes. On the one hand, we should be able to wear whatever we want, but the styles these days, <laughs> oh my gosh. Or maybe it's always been this way with each new generation. It's just so different from what I grew up with. I wonder if modesty culture sometimes projects our own discomfort with our own, our, with our own bodies onto other people. You shouldn't wear that because it makes me feel uncomfortable. Oh, that is really insightful. <laughs> but our bodies aren't evil, right? I mean, God made us physical creatures on purpose. In fact, if I remember right, in Genesis 2, God forms Adam and Eve out of the dust of the earth with God's own hands and in God's own image. So it's almost like God has a body too, right? And in fact, God did take on a human body when God came to us in Jesus Christ. So surely that is a sign to us of God's regard for our physical selves as well as our spiritual. God chose a human body in the incarnation. That makes me feel like I should take care of this body. Not because I want to look like a magazine model, but because it's a precious gift from God. I should care for my body by giving it the things it needs, like good nutrition, medical care, and exercise, but not try to make it something it's not. I'm not supposed to look like a Barbie doll or Kim Kardashian. <laughs> God may be unique and special and wants me to enjoy this gift, not harm it. Yeah. There's a verse in 1 Corinthians where Paul says, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. I think your body means all of our bodies, right? All of us are potential homes for the Holy Spirit. I don't see how it could possibly be this way if we were all inherently corrupt. After all, when God made us, God called humankind very good. It wasn't until that snake came along, remember, whispering lies in our ears, that our bodies made us feel ashamed. So God called us good, and the snake, the devil, made us feel ashamed. That's interesting. Uh, that's interesting, isn't it? It's a little like we talked about in last week's uh, BW502 podcast, don't call unclean what God has made clean, right? 
Don't call ugly what God has made beautiful. Our ideas of what our human bodies should be should come from the God who made us, not from media or magazines. And especially that from advertisements and commercials, they're designed to make us feel dissatisfied with what we have so that we spend money on what they're trying to sell. Mm -hmm. It's no accident that looking at the people in those Photoshop ads make us feel inadequate. They're invested a lot of money to design ads for that effect. In fact, recent revelations about Facebook, Instagram, and other social media has shown how they have all contributed to this informatic and troubling ways. And they knew about it. They knew they were contributing to anxiety and depression. They had the statistics. They saw them so far. Uh, but they kept doing it anyway because it kept people on the page for longer and earned them more money. That sounds like some snake talk going on. But the snake doesn't love us. The ads do not love us. The media does not love us. We should listen to the one who does love us, the one who made us, lovingly knitting us together, the one who calls us beautiful and beloved, God. Friends, as we come to the close of this podcast, we want to invite you to reflect on what we have said this morning, to take some time to thank the God who loves you, the God who made you, for the body that God gave you. Give thanks for what it can do, for how your body helps you to feel, for where you've been together, for what your body helps you do, for how your body enables you to love and serve and worship. Ask God to help you love your body like God loves your body. For your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And then this afternoon, or this evening, this is your last challenge, do something good for your body. Not just something that feels good in the moment, but something that's really, truly good for your body. Like eat a nutritious meal, or take a good walk. Have a warm bath, or a massage. Schedule that doctor's appointment that you've been putting off. <laughs> Do some yoga. Appreciate your body as a gift from God, not as a liability that keeps you from being happy. And give thanks. Give thanks for your body. I'd like to also encourage you to make an effort to become part of a bigger movement of learning to love and accept others' bodies, too combating fat phobia and body shaming, and remembering our value and worth goes well beyond physical appearance. If you'd like to know more, check out these resources. I'm going to look them up, but there's thebodypositive.org on Facebook. Um, the Body is Not an Apology. Uh, National Eating Disorders Association, womenshealth.gov. Um, there are books for young people, including the Body Image Book for Girls and the Body Image Book for Boys. And there are also resources for trans and non-binary people um, that are gradually becoming more available. A good social worker or counselor for myself cannot be fine with what you mean. Thank goodness for good social workers and counselors. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, that's all the time we have today for EW 502 Conversations About. Tune in again next time, which will be July 10th, for a conversation about mental health, anxiety, depression, and healing the inner self. If you'd like to contribute to this conversation, talk to Pastor Sarah after the service. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Our call to action this morning is to find ways to love your body the way that God loves your body. God loves your body, made it on purpose, gave it to you as a gift, and there's so many reasons to be thankful. So that is your challenge today and your call to action, as well as a reminder that our youth and our children and our adults, some of our folks are going to Little Grassy for camp this coming week. They're leaving after this first service, so be in prayer for them. Thanks to those who have written notes of encouragement. We appreciate that so much. And finally, let us give thanks to God for who we are as a community through this morning's offering. We invite our ushers to come forward to receive gifts on behalf of grateful hearts. Would our ushers come forward, please?
bless these gifts, that they may be used for the building of your kingdom, that we can be instruments of improving the attitude of our bodies, for they are gifts from you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Maybe you noticed in the bulletin I skipped the uh, commissioning of the leaders. We're going to do that right now. I would invite you to remove from your bulletin the insert that lists all of our leadership. To take a look at that, please. And to uh, just notice the names. All the people will look. The big ones and the small ones, the old ones and the young ones, the many different kinds of people that God has called into leadership here at Wesley Church, and for whom we give thanks. And I would invite those whose names are listed to please stand as you are able, that we might uh, engage you in a prayer of consecration and a liturgy of welcome into leadership. Dear friends, you have been called by God and chosen by the people of God for leadership in the church. This ministry is a blessing and is a serious responsibility. It recognizes your special gifts and calls you to work among us and for us. In love, we thank you for accepting your obligation and challenge you to offer your best to the Lord, to this people, to our ministry in the world. Live a life in Christ and make him known in your witness and your work. Today, we install the leadership teams of all the ministries or committees, including United Methodist Men, United Methodist Women, and the Wesley Youth Cabinet. These persons will begin their leadership on July 1st, and some will begin later in the year. If you feel a call to help us in these ministries, please let us know. We always welcome more laborers for the vineyard. To the leadership, I'm going to ask you a question. And will you please respond? Do you this day acknowledge yourself a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I do. I do. I do. Will you devote yourself to service of God in the world? If so, say, I will. I will. Will you live so that you enable this church to be a people of love and peace? If so, say, I will. I will. Will you do in all of your power to be responsible for the task that has been assigned to you? If so, say, I will. I will. Let us pray. Almighty God, pour out your blessings upon these your servants who have been given particular ministries in your church. Grant them grace to give themselves wholeheartedly in your service. Keep before them the example of our Lord, who did not think first of himself, but gave himself for us all. Let them share his ministry and consecration, that they may enter into his joy. Guide them in their work. Reward their faithfulness with the knowledge that through them your purposes are accomplished. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now friends, those of you who are seated, rejoice that God provides laborers for the vineyard. Will you do all you can to assist and encourage them? in the responsibilities to which they've been called, giving them your cooperation, your counsel, and your prayers. If so, congregation, please say, we will. We will. Amen. Thanks be to God. You may be seated, and thank you so much. On behalf of the nomination and the late leadership team, I ask the congregation to take a day of the week and pray for each of these ministries so that when they start their responsibilities on July 1st, they will be girded by prayer. The prayer of unity, the prayer of cooperation, and guidance of the Holy Spirit. We need you to pray for your leadership team. This is not ours, yours, and they represent you. So starting tonight, tomorrow, please start. Pick a day and pick a ministry or two and pray for that because they move the ministry of Wesley forward. I would appreciate that. <laughs> ah, we're at the end of the journey. Uh, so y'all can get off God's couches and go do some exercise. Uh, Gail 
Coach and Sadie will be here in the green, the space outside the guard room next Sunday at 9.30. Excuse me, today after this service and 11.30 service to talk about calls. So go find out what that ministry is all about. We do have about four members who have their fancy and training now, but you can join the class as well if you feel that room. This afternoon, Andrew Johnson will have his organ recital. So if you have nothing you want to do, come and get your mind relaxed by hearing God's music. On next, on next Sunday, parking lot service at 9 o'clock. There will be no children's ministry or Sunday school. Will you stand as you are able for our closing hymn? You got just a word about this hymn? Yeah, this is a new hymn. Uh, it's called Sacred the Body. You have words up on the screen. Frank's going to play the introduction. Uh, it's the melody. It's the tune of the piece. It's really simple. Try it. The choir and I will lead you through it. Don't worry about mistakes. We're all in this together. We'll be great. Here we go. <laughs>
notice your name was omitted on the Yeah, I, I, well, yeah. <laughs> Not much.
because that's normally the thing that I least look forward to about travel is sleep.
first time we did it was about this time last year. Um, so it'll just be those two songs, which will just more than pretty much suffice. Um, so next week is the encore service. We're only doing two songs, and there should be two about here if we wanted to play it, but we didn't really want to. So we're like, two songs, I don't want to sit out in the heat on the keyboard. Like, that's fine too. We won't have rehearsal because I'll be at camp all week. So it will literally be like morning of, we're going to just rip it into bits. So, so it's up to you. You can just think about it, let me know. And then we'll see. So. Okay, we're on our <laughs> we have four people because the whole family is going down to camp for the week. So we have four people. Suits and like swim bag, and our car was packed. <laughs> Absolutely packed. And we had originally offered to them that he could ride with us. And then he was like, Well, it's a good thing uh, he didn't did take us up on that because there literally he wasn't, the dog was even freaking out because Lindsay had to run. She was running to Shirley to the lady to drop the dog off.
Check. We just need the iPad. There it is. was between us by the cross you came and broke them down you broke them down there were chains around us by your grace we are no longer bound no longer bound you call me out of the grave you call me into the light you call my name and then my heart came alive your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. darkness shaking and all the dead are coming back to life come back to life hear the song awaken and all creation singing we're alive cause you're alive you call me out of the grave you call me into the light you call my name and then my heart came alive love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. In what I love we found, death can hold us down. Shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive in what a love we found. Death can't hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive. 
alive Cause you're alive Your love is greater Your love is stronger Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me Your love is greater Your love is stronger Your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love awakens me. Lost ever be found Could a garden come up from this ground At all And you 